Hey guys, welcome to Water Baby Tarot. I hope you guys are doing really good. So we're going to do an energy shift reading. Um, today is the 20th of December. So in Tropic, Venus goes into Aquarius. Tomorrow is the winter solstice. And on the 26th, we got the eclipse. We've been in eclipse energy for a little while because we've been in the pre-shadow, but we are heading right to that little climax of that energy. So let's go ahead and do, uh, let's go ahead and do the reading. <laughs> brain fart let's go ahead and do the reading i'll be doing more energy shift readings like i said earlier going into 2020 i'll be doing more videos like this and yes i'm still working on the signs i can hear you guys talking ever since i got back from sedona it's been a lot harder for me to do um uh readings <laughs> sign readings um like the way i used to it's hard for me to do multiple in one day so i'm trying guys i'm trying to catch up but let's go ahead and see what messages uh, they've got for us. I'm going to use the Shaman deck here. I was debating what deck to use because I've, I've been feeling the need to really mix up my decks and what kind of decks I use um, due to some downloads I got. So I've got a couple coming in that I'm really excited about. Oh, so you guys are asking about my P.O. Box. <laughs> I just meditated before I got on here, so I'm just really open right now. I tried a new, uh, med a new meditation, excuse me, and it's worked really well for me. Anyway, I will be checking the P.O. Box sometime this week. Um... I'll be checking sometime this week. Okay. All right. Trying to stay focused, guys. Trying to stay focused. Okay. So let's see what uh, Spirit has for us. Any messages for the collective for what's to come with these energy shifts or anything we need to be aware of? Anything you want the collective to be aware of regarding these? I, I heard think bigger. Think bigger. Think bigger. Think bigger. Interesting. Interesting. A lot of you guys are really focused on the new, which is good. You should be. For all this crazy energy, you definitely should be focused on the new. That's what all this energy is geared towards and innovation as well. Think bigger. Oh, didn't mean, to, didn't mean to shake the camera. Think bigger of what you're already thinking of. Some of you guys are contemplating um, what you want your life to look like. Some of you guys are thinking about business ideas, projects, or, you know, oh, maybe I want to live here, or maybe I can do this. Maybe I can have this amount of money. Well, what can I do investment wise to get that? Think bigger than what you're thinking. Think bigger. Think bigger. Any messages for the collective for what to expect of these energy shifts? Or anything you want the collective to be aware of? Okay. Any messages for the collective for what's to come with these energy shifts? Or anything you want the collective to be aware of regarding these energy shifts? Some of you... We got a card. Hold on a second. Got a little download. So some of you have recently formed some new business relationships or are, a, or are about to. Be careful with this. I feel like some of you might want to make them romantic. You don't have to be making them romantic. They could just be business related. Um, a lot of creative, innovative uh, energy is coming out of these relationships. Pay attention to that. Focus on that. I feel like that's going to be leading you to a lot of your new things, okay? Let's see what we have. Oh, we've got the gatherer. 21, breaking down to a three. So definitely collaborating with people is what I'm getting with that 21 energy. Um, that breaks down to a three. That's communication. That's social. That's the network, right? It's also about starting to build foundations, starting to build towards something. The gatherer is an energy of harvesting, but only taking what you need. Only taking what you need to build what you need, okay? So so think big. There's nothing wrong with thinking big, but try to maintain a focus on one big concept. Don't try to have all these like 10 million different projects going on and try to do everything. Some of you guys are gonna, some of you guys need to hear that. Don't try to have all these different crazy projects going on. Have one big one. Have one big on, big, big on? <laughs> Have one big one, excuse me, or if you're going to have multiple, have it all be connected. Have it all be for the same thing or for the same reason or have the same. <coughs> Hold on, excuse me. Mm. Mm. Okay. If you're going to have multiple projects, have it be for one main concept, like have them be connected in some way or build upon each other in some way. I was getting something else with this. Hold on. It's only about what you need. Some of you are kind of scared to go and some into some into these new adventures, endeavors, or even and getting a lot of business here for a lot of you guys. Um, so you guys are afraid of where you're going and that you won't have enough. You will. Don't get don't fall into that scarcity mindset. We worked on that. We worked on that. Don't fall into the scarcity mindset. You're gonna have everything you need. Some of you guys have to get rid of a lot of stuff. Some of you guys have to get rid of a lot of physical stuff for where you're going. So try to be okay with that. <laughs> try to be okay with that. Try to be okay with that. 
and only take the people with you that you need to. Sorry, they're, they're really honing in on this networking and talking to people. Like I said, a lot of you have met some new people, new business relationships specifically, or just relationships that help you create, that help you be innovative. You know, maybe you picked up a new hobby and you've met people within that creative little world that you've recently entered. It's about new creative stuff, okay? You met these people for a reason, right? You met these people for a reason. You encountered their energy for a reason. So remember that. We don't have to take a lot of people into 2020. I hate saying it like that, but it's just true. It's just true, okay? But if you've met people recently, it's for a reason, okay? Any other messages for the collective regarding the energy shifts? Any other messages for the collective regarding the energy shifts or anything else you want them to be aware of? Any other messages regarding these energy shifts or anything else you want them to be aware of? Let's see here. Oh, I had a feeling these cards were going to come out. Okay, so we have the owl. Ooh, 39, another three. You got two threes here, guys. Taming the wind. 55, an energy of major pivot, major, major pivoting. It is a new moon eclipse closing out the 2019 year going into 2020. All this Capricorn energy and Pluto being a Capricorn, a lot of stuff is falling apart. So a lot of new stuff can come in, guys. So that means a lot of pivot, a lot of change. And you guys already know this. This should not be new to you, okay? Then we have the circle. Oh, I love this came out. Energy of eight, which is auspicious energy. It's my CEO energy. It's success. It's prosperity, right? And then we have the rainmaker. I love this card. When this card came out, I was like, yes. <laughs> I'm actually hearing earth angels with this. So those of you with... um who understand what that is and know that you are one, you're definitely, this might definitely resonate for you, okay? This will definitely resonate for you is what I meant to say. I know, my vocabulary is not with me. 42 breaking down to a six, and if you notice, got the new moon behind her, just saying, just saying. We do have, and it is a solar eclipse with this one, okay? So let's see what I have here with the owl and taming the wind. Yeah, you guys know. You guys already know. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know. I just feel like it's almost like, I feel like that's all this is. It's like saying, hey, you know change is coming. So get ready for it. Get ready for it. Don't resist it. Face it head on because you know with the owl that it's coming. With the circle and the rainmaker, the change that's coming, keep in mind there are people connected to you because we are all connected. The circle's a reminder of that, that we are all connected on this energy ne energy network, right? So with the rainmaker, which is manifestation energy, as things start to come to fruition, as the news starts to come in, understand that it is, a, a, for a lot of us, it is about our purpose, it is about our path and what we are meant to do and how that affects other people. A lot of us here in the community are really here to help people to some capacity or in some kind of way in whatever field that we're in or whatever we've studied, whatever whatever our, our calling is, some of you that's teaching, some of you that's actually in the justice system, right? Like actual legal shit, right? So whatever it is, because there's an array for all of you, some of you requires a nine to five job. I was talking to, to somebody about this, actually. Who was I talking to you about this? Oh, it was on the podcast. That's where it was. I was like, I know it's on the tip of my tongue. On the podcast, uh, Lacey actually talked a lot about this. Um, for a lot of us star seeds, yes, it does require a nine to five job. And sometimes people in our community who have who are in that situation have struggled with that because it makes them not feel so esoteric right or so or so etherical or so connected but it is it's just part of your purpose your path we need people everywhere right we need people everywhere guys but just understand that that the manifestations that are coming to fruition our paths our purpose it does involve the wider collective to some extent okay with these new shifts that are happening yeah being drawn into these two cards. <sighs> Major shift for the whole collective. Major shift as a whole society. It's on a societal level of what's coming, guys. And keep in mind, guys, this is months out. We're going to start seeing the, the little change leading up to this. And then we're going to start seeing it get into a much grander scale on, like I said, on a societal level. But the change starts now. And all change that affects everyone starts on the individual level. So like I said, we know things are pivoting for us. We know change is coming for us. We know we got to get into the new shit, right? We know that. We fucking know that. So as we start to do that, start to own it, start to go for it and don't resist it. And we start to go on that new path. We start to live it. We start to embody it. We start to get shit happening. It's going to start affecting the collective. It's going to. As something changes within you, the whole collective feels it on some minute level. So if all of us start doing that, the whole collective is going to start feeling it. And we're going to start to build up to this societal change. Okay. Sorry, I'm giving you guys a lot of information. Let's keep going. 
I love that the owl's out here though, because this is definitely about, you know, <laughs> you know, and it's just the, the intuitive notion of, you know, there's going to be a big pivot. You know, these new things are coming. Any other messages for the collective regarding this energy shift? Oh, very interesting. Any other messages regarding this energy shift? Wow, a lot of cards, guys. <laughs> I mean, I know it's a lot of stuff, but still a lot of cards, a lot of cards. Okay, let's see what we have here. Whew. Ooh, we've got the rattle and many paths. 43 and 34, we got mirror numbers with this, guys. Many paths always reminds me a little bit of the Seven of Cups. It's like, when it comes to big destined things in your life, you got a lot of ways of getting there, right? That's what this is about. You got a lot of options of getting to where you're being called to go, so just do it. <laughs> So just go like you're going to get there as long as you move, as long as you make that conscious decision of, OK, I, I know what I want or I know what my destiny is supposed to look like or I have some kind of idea of where my soul is being pulled on. That's the rattle. My soul is being pulled on or I'm being or I'm being told by my guides, my intuition to do this or to do that or that at some point I need to implement this in my life. You got a lot of ways of getting there, but you will get there. You might get there in a week. You might get there in a year. Right. But you'll get there. You'll get there. And then, which I freaking love, we've got the beauty way. Energy of four. This came out for, um, this came out, I feel like, for Sag. Maybe it was a Patreon reading, because I, I usually only use this one for Patreon. Um, I feel like it did. I feel like it did. Now I can't remember, but I feel like it was for Sag. So this is about stability. This is a really beautiful card here, and you see the dragonfly always indicates intuition to me, and I feel like this flower is always, this, Flower is always about abundance for me personally as a reader. Um, but this is heading towards something really amazing. This is heading towards something really beautiful. Um, but we have to make sure that we have the space to get there. We have to make sure that we have the space to get there. Yeah, that's what I'm getting with that. Only take what you need. Only take what you need and who you need with wherever you're going. I'll be honest, guys, like for some, this is a this is also about um, getting getting away from how do I say this? <sighs> Not comfortable living. I don't want to make it sound like that because it's going to be comfortable where you're going. <laughs> it's going to be nice where we're going as long as we go. Right. It's going to be it'll be it'll be good. It'll be nice and cushy. But it's like the extras, the extras for for some. Uh, there There needs to be a cutting away of the extras. Oh, damn it. I swear if this gets off sync, I'm going to be so annoyed. <laughs> I just saw it glitch on me. Um, yeah, for some, it's about getting rid of the extras. Like there, you don't need, there's a lot in life we don't actually need, right? Take what you need and take who you need for wh wherever you're going next. Overall, we have the Andean cross with the energy of two. Andean cross is about the different directions, north, south, east, and west, which plays a role in shamanic practices. Um, it also plays a role in healing in different cultures. They represent different things, okay? But basically, you know where you're going, and you already have all the tools, all the lessons from all the directions that you've come from in life to get there. You have the tools. You have the tools to go into this new thing, whatever the new thing is for you, the new phase, the new cycle. You know it's going to require a big change. You know there's a big pivot coming. And once you <clears throat> once you accept your personal pivot, we'll start to see over time the pivot on a societal level. And it's something that has been manifested. It's something that you've manifested on an individual level for whatever new thing is for you, right? To get to your goal, your beautiful thing, whatever your beautiful stability looks like, and society will catch up. I know a lot of messages, a lot of heavy messages, like for first thing in the morning. I just went on my hike, actually. Um, so let's break down some of these. I kind of want to break down some of this, especially the gatherer. I really want to break that one down. Um, let's see what we have. We'll do cosmic. Let's do cosmic. <clears throat> so I'm about the gatherer. Hey, hold on a second. Mm. By the way, guys, it's 111. Just like so oh talking about the gather. Talking about the gather. Talking 
time at the gather for the collective regarding this shift. Time with the gather. Let's see here. Oh my. Oh my. We have the Eight of Cups, Pisces with the King of Cups, Scorpio. Could also be um, water or air with the uh, Queen of Pentacles, Capricorn energy. Could also be earth or water. I got to be honest with you guys. So with the gather, like I was saying, it was take who you need and what you need. Leave everything else behind. Right? You see the way he's looking at her? He's the one that has the Eight of Cups. She's kind of looking off into whatever. Right? <laughs> She's looking elsewhere. He's looking at her. She's looking elsewhere. Uh, this king, this masculine energy is contemplating of where to go next, but looking at her like, are you coming with me? Are you not coming with me? Are you coming with me? Not coming with me. So like I said, guys, you see all this, these cups, these emotions, this king, this energy knows I got to go to my 10 of cups. I got to go this way. Do I take this person? Do I not take this person? Take only what you need. Take only what you need and who you need. Okay. Tell me more about the gather. For some of you, like I said, you have to use your discernment because we have recently met, we, for most of us, we should have, and for some way we'll, we'll continue to meet people for innovative purposes, creative purposes. That can be for business specifically or for advancement in our own lives, our own growth, or it could be romance. I got to be honest though, I really feel like it's going to be mostly about innovation coming into 2020. So for some of you, this king is taking this queen, some they're not. You could be this king or you could be this queen. It, it goes both ways. We're talking about the collective. This is a collective reading, guys. So don't get caught up on the genders. Don't get caught up on, oh, that person's that person in my life or I'm this person in that life. Just listen to the messages. We got to take who we need to take and leave behind who we need to leave behind. Okay. I'm not going to take those. Talk about the gather. Oh, guys, yeah, see, even as I was talking about, like, getting rid of, like, the extras, like, we don't really need the extras. Queen of Pentacles, not saying Queen of Pentacles is extra. Queen of Pentacles is usually a business owner, usually just has a lot, but they are Pentacle-based, right? The Queen of Pentacles usually does have luxuries. The King of Cups, they've got more emotional luxuries. <laughs> like I said, for some, you're going to have to get rid of the, like, luxuries of life, maybe, like, the little bit of 3D stuff, right? This is Capricorn energy. What is the Capricorn card in tarot? The devil, the luxuries, the things that make us feel good, the things that are a little unnecessary, right? Like I said, take only what you need. Okay. Talking about the gather. Talking about the gather. Talking about the gather for the collective regarding this energy shift. Ooh. The lovers i know it's a very it's a very nice lovers card isn't it uh gemini energy I, I actually just love looking at this lovers card it's probably my favorite lovers card i think i've ever seen to be honest with you i just want to look at it it just looks so pretty anyway so as i said for some yes you will be taking people with you that you're guided to take with you this is a divinely guided connection it doesn't have to be pure romance it is the lovers but it's about divinely guided, intense soul connections, right? It's also about making those decisions, the head over heart decisions. You guys have to use your discernment into who you're taking and what you're taking with you moving forward. Overall energy, death in reverse, scorpionic energy, and then we've got the four of wands in reverse, Aries energy. For some, there's going to be a lot of resistance to this. Do not resist making these decisions. I know it's not going to feel awesome. I know it's not going to feel awesome, but... We have to make these decisions because the more you resist, you might not have this st stability moving forward. This is kind of the challenge going into 2020. Have we learned our lessons? Have we grown? Have we evolved? Are we ready for the next step? Because sometimes that next step requires us to make these kinds of cuts, right? If we want that stability, we can't resist. We can't resist. Wow. All right. I know this is kind of like, I don't mean to like sound all like, <laughs> I don't mean to sound like that. I'm just the... I'm feeling the energy and it's really intense. It's like, you know, sp spirits like meaning business. I can, they're meaning business right now. So let's get into this energy of the pivot. Of the pivot. 
on an individual level, which will eventually manifest on a societal level with that circle card, okay? Like I said, this is every this is all the shifting that we know is supposed to happen within our lives, the new that we're supposed to take on in our lives, um, and really understanding that we gotta go with the flow, right? And go where we're, where we're guided to go. Yeah, I'm kinda interested in taming the wind. That one's really calling out to me. So let's go ahead and look at that card. Uh, yeah, let's do spellcasters. Talking about taming the wind. Talking about taming the wind for the collective. Talking about taming the wind. For the collective regarding this energy shift. Talking about taming the wind regarding this energy shift. Oh, oh, didn't realize there was one underneath there. So we have three of cups in reverse, Cancerian energy, and then we have the king of wands. Leo energy could also see fire or air. King of wands is someone who gets up and goes and gets shit done. Entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial energy, leader energy, also very fun. It can, it can be the life of the party. Three of cups in reverse, this is, this is a king who is not really playing well with others right now. <laughs> Intentionally or not. They're very grounded though. They're very grounded. They're standing strong in their energy. They're not bothered. They're not bothered that they're not getting along with other people. Okay, and like I said, there's a pivot going on at an individual level. Having the knowledge to break away from people who don't serve you or who don't resonate with your energy or where you're going. So it's more of the same energy, right? More of the same energy. Tell me more about Taming the Wind. Tell me more about Taming the Wind. Some of you guys, this might happen um, as you pull away from people or people pull away from you. Some of you, this might happen in a really dramatic way. And if that happens in a really dramatic way, you might have a tendency to get a little stuck in it. Don't get stuck in it. Just, just allow it to flow. <laughs> wow, taming the wind, right? Allow it to flow. Allow the wind to blow. Winds of change to blow and let it go, right? And let it go. If someone was taken out of your life, even under dramatic circumstances, uh, toxic circumstances, um, deceptive circumstances, just let it go. Let it go. Talking about taming the wind. Getting a lot of masculine. Yeah, see, six of swords, Aquarian energy. Yeah, just let it go. Just let it go and move forward. I'm um, getting stuff about masculine energy here. Oh, this is interesting. Divergence of the masculine. Um, so we already know on a societal level moving forward, especially like over the next year and years, there's going to be an e like an ever increasing divergence of, of the population, right? Of people who are ascending, woke, all that stuff and heading towards abundance and the people who want to stay asleep or who are who just don't wake up and fall deeper into um, the old ways of doing things, right? Who resist that change. They're, they're bringing my attention to the masculine energy specifically that there is a divergence about to happen with them. Um, those who fall deep. Yeah, it's, it's like, so and I love how this stuff works. So this will be happening on a societal level, like I just said. It's going to be happening with the masculine energy first, first before it affects the wider collective is what they're telling me. Um, and with masculine energy, we all have masculine energy and so, God, so funny. We've talked about this. We talked about this on the podcast too. So definitely watch, uh, listen to that podcast, guys. There's a lot of information there that's like I'm starting to see come up in readings. Uh, we talked about Death of the Masculine. So go ahead and, and listen to that. Um, Jessa Reed's podcast, Soberish. I posted it on the community tab. So go ahead and take a peek. Anyway, um, so they're bringing my attention to this divergence of masculine energy where we're going to like, we're going to see it a lot there first and feminines because fem my feminines, because you have masculine energy within you as well. You might even feel that pull a little bit, but people who have way more dominant masculine energy or sit in their masculine energy or who have really um, wounded masculine energy are going to feel this hard where there's a divergence of like falling even deeper into the old ways of being and regressing versus leveling up, making change, cutting away from shit and going to where they're supposed to go. We're going to start seeing that. So this is so interesting. 
Oh, this is so interesting. Um, <laughs> the way they're showing it to me is so crazy. They're showing me like a party. Um, and it's like some people are hitting the bottle harder. Some people are like smoking it up a lot more. And the other people are, are actually like, like, like they're, they're standing up straight. They're like looking around and they're like leaving. They're just leaving. They're just leaving. And they're, it's, it's so fascinating. It's almost like a quick little change. Yeah, this is going to be so cool. Okay. Yeah. So with masculine energy, sorry, I sound like a broken record, but it's just, I just have to repeat this. So yeah, we're going to see some masculine energies regress even further into wounded masculine energy, and we're going to see some bouncing out of that, okay? And even for my females, because you have masculine energy, you're going to feel that within yourself, maybe even a little pull to go back to your old ways of being, if you had any kind of, like, within masculine energy um, versus like, oh no, I got to like level up and do my shit, right? You're going to feel that a little bit with even within yourselves, but we're going to see a massive divergence in masculine collectives, like between males specifically, um, of this first. Ooh, very fascinating. And then eventually the whole collective will catch up and society will catch up. Uh, ooh, what did I say? Four of cups in reverse, Cancerian energy with the king of swords in reverse. Aqua, this could also be, um, Gemini or Libra, this is some, we, this is rejecting toxic masculinity. This is rejecting narcissistic behavior, rejecting manipulation, lies, lack of communication, not think like low vibrational ways of being. This is rejecting that, totally rejecting that. Oh my God, I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's like high vibe masculine energy versus low vibe masculine energy. We're gonna see a massive divergence in that. Tell me more about Taming the Wind. So like I said, guys, if you feel that pull of temptation, just check in with yourself and like recognize what, why that's happening and where it's coming from. And remember, you've learned that lesson already, right? You've learned that lesson already. Tell me more about taming the wind. Tell me more about taming the wind. Overall energy. Who the tower. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. The winds of change. This is just representing the change, right? Scorpionic energy could also be Aries because it's Mars. That's all it is. Awakenings. Thank you. I'm hearing awakenings. Awakenings. Yeah, like I said, the people who are like <laughs> going to be uh, get ascending in their masculine energy and healing their masculine energies a lot more, um, they're they're awake. They're awakening. For some of these people are actually having the, some of these people are actually having an awakening versus having the realization that they need to make these changes. Okay. Wow, a lot more people are about to wake up. A lot more people are about to wake up. Oh my God, I'm getting excited. Getting excited. Oh, this is beautiful. I mean, the divergence is gonna be a little sad. I'll be honest, guys. It's gonna be a little sad. It might even be a little chaotic, but it's definitely happening with masculine energies. Yeah, it's happening with masculine energies, including within females. And then once that happens, society is going to be catching up and all of us on an individual level are going towards the new and those of us who resist it will regress. Most likely. Wow. I know. A lot of info. A lot of info. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So we have the rattle and many paths. Like I said, as long as you go to where your soul is calling you to go, where you're being pulled to go, where your heart's like, oh my God, I have to be there. Um, as long as you go... <laughs> You'll get there eventually. You'll get there eventually. If we stand still or fall back into the things we we are comfortable with or the things that are already old to us, we're going to regress. Do not regress. Do not regress. Because there's going to be a little temptation going on here. There is. There is going to be temptation. And then we're going to end up here. Look how beautiful that looks. This is where we're headed. If you follow the, the pull, going into the new and not resisting it. Not resisting it. But let's go ahead. And clarify this one. Yeah, let's go ahead and clarify that. He's reading it wise for this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Talking about beauty way. And like I said, I really feel like innovation is is the key here in all of this for this energy shift for where we're going in the new on an individual level in your own lives, okay? So like I said, if you've met people recently that you formed relationships with that are more creative based or you guys like to brainstorm a lot or you just end up talking about certain things a lot like that. It's a very innovative kind of connection or a business related connection. Focus on that. Focus on that. Like I said, you met them for a reason. Tell me about Beauty Way. Tell me about Beauty Way. 
beauty way. Toned up beauty way. Yeah, it's time to create so we can have stability. That's what they just told me. It's time to create so we can have stability. Toned up beauty way. Wow, sorry, my guides are like, my guides have been very on edge lately because some of the stuff I've had to deal with, not going to talk about that here, but my guides have been very like, <laughs> lately, it's just kind of funny. Uh, they want me to really make it clear that this does not imply romance. They want me to make that very clear. This does not imply romance. Come up, beauty way. Some of you are going to have that for sure. There's a lot of us. Some of you will have that romance, but they want me to make it clear to not go into this thinking, you know, person of my dreams, person of my dreams, person of my dreams is in the new. Like they, they want me to make that very clear, very clear. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, now they're, I was gonna say they're bitching, but I shouldn't say that. Um, they're just, they were just telling me that it's really, it's clouded a lot of your judgments, okay? That's what they're telling me. I'm not judging. That's just what they're telling me. Tell me about beauty way. Tell me about beauty way. Tell me about beauty way for the collective. Oh, interesting. Seven of Wands, Leo energy. Ew, okay. You might feel very protective of what you want to build, which I don't think is a bad thing. Whatever it is for you, I don't think that's a bad thing. It's good to protect your ideas, especially if it's like a business idea or something. You know, you don't want anyone trying to do some bullshit, right? But it, it feels a little aggressive. Talk about beauty way. Talk about beauty way. Oh, animosity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you might have some people some animosity or throwing some adversity your way. For whatever it is you want to build, don't let that stop you. I don't think you guys will. Ew, and there it is. <laughs> The devil. <laughs> the world. Fixed energy. Aquarius, Leo, Taurus, Scorpio, also Saturn, which rules Capricorn. And the devil. Capricorn. Yeah, this is you protecting your shit. Protect it, because it's beautiful. Look at that. Look at the world card. That's where you guys are headed. Into the brand spanking new. Whole new cycle, right? Some of you guys are changing a lot of shit in your lives, or changing your whole life. And you're trusting that. And you're protecting that from this shit. Like I said, there's going to be temptation to regress. There's going to be. Do not allow that to happen. Don't allow it to happen. And like I said, it seems like you guys won't be. You're going to be very protective of this. But yeah, the devil's lurking. All right, let's see what else comes out here. And especially guys, a lot of you are coming to some really amazing things. Oh, like really, like truly, we've, we've seen it in readings and we, and you guys know, what well, the owl, you guys do know that a lot of you are coming into abundance. And when people can sense that and they can sniff it out, the devil comes out. People come after you. They just do. It's human nature, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, be very protective. Be very protective of your stuff. Tell me about beauty way. Tell me about beauty way. Tell me about beauty way. I just heard activism. Activism is going to skyrocket. That's what they're telling me. Yeah, now we have the Hierophant. Taurian energy. Overall, we do have the Five of Cups in reverse. Uh, scorpionic energy. So like I said, you're going to be letting things go, letting people go, letting ways of being out of your life, maybe even just getting rid of actual stuff, like physical stuff. But you don't need it where you're going. You don't need those people. You don't need those things where you're going. You're going to have everything you need. Only take what you need and who you need. You're going to get over that, that loss very fast. Because some of you, like I said, it's going to be temptation to keep that stuff and to keep you stuck, to keep you where you are, to not go into the new. And if you do that, you're going to be part of the group that regresses or gets left behind in some fashion. So don't be part of that group. But then we have the Hierophant, Taurian energy. Always reminds me of the patriarchy, especially when it comes out near the devil. This is like, I feel like this is protecting where we're going from where we've been and what we're leaving behind, right? The old ways of being, the patriarchy, the, the oppressed shit, the institutional shit, protecting that, protecting that. Also listening to your higher self, listening to your higher self and not the devil. This is actually my left side. I know it's a mirror camera. This is my left side, this is my right side. <laughs> so funny it's coming out like this too. 
listen to your higher self and don't let the devil creep in don't let temptation creep in don't let those negative thoughts creep in don't let those low vibe energies creep in people are getting spiritually attacked right now like crazy i just have to mention that they are um and a lot of my subs you guys reached out to me because you guys have been getting attacked that's what this is that's what this is that's what this is uh like i said beautiful shit beautiful shit is close it's close these energies know and when i say these energies it's low vibe people okay they know. They know what's coming for you. And they don't like it. So keep protecting yourself. And keep listening to your higher self. I know sometimes it can be confusing. Especially if you're getting heavily attacked. Sometimes they can actually send you crazy thoughts like this. <laughs> of this vibration. Um, if, you, if you are really tapped in and really grounded. Make sure you're really grounded right now. Um, make sure you meditate. Okay, let's go over grounding in a minute after I talk about this. Um, but if you're really tapped in and you're really grounded, you'll be able to discern which is which. You'll be able to. It's yours. Protect it. Okay. Um, anyway, coming back to the grounding. Oh, I don't need to hold enough for this. Um, so with grounding, meditate every day. Go outside every day. Uh, let your feet touch the earth every day in some fashion, find dirt. If you live in a metropolis, find a park. There's dirt there. <laughs> Just let your feet touch earth. Um, also walk around barefoot. Um, eat a lot of roots. Those are good. Work on your lower chakras. Um, it's another way to ground. Visualization is a good way to ground too. Not everyone's favorite method, but it, it does work. Um, different like incense you could use, like sandalwood's good for that. Sandalwood's really good for grounding and protection actually. Um, what else? What else? What else? I'm trying to think of certain stones. Um, lower chakra stones. Shoot, why can't anything come to my mind right now for that? When it comes to crystals and stones, I feel like it should be a personal choice of what crystal is best for you because everyone's vibration for personal vibration is very different and crystals react to you differently, right? Um, so with that, I would actually tell you to go to a store and see what calls to you. Um, or you can always just research because like I said, choose your own, choose your own. And honestly, no, nothing's coming to me right now, which is very strange. Um, even fossils are really good for grounding because excuse me, um, because they're from the earth, right, and they're very ancient, they're old as shit, that it's also really great for grounding, um, even if you go outside, like, in nature, to the desert, to the park, to the woods, or wherever, and you find rocks there, and you meditate with them, and take them home with you, that could also be very grounding, yeah, try all those methods, guys, it's really important, because like I said, devil's trying so hard to creep in right now, okay, Guys, this was really informative. And like I said, I know it's a lot of information, but I think it's going to be very helpful for you guys, especially if you've been feeling that pull of temptation and you're not sure, or if you've been really confused, that's because this is lurking around, okay? Um, if you've had people telling you, you can't do this, you can't do that, that's that. Um, what else? The divergence of masculine energy. That was big. That was really big. And that was really interesting. The divergence of masculine energy. So like I said, just also like watch that within yourself. More of that same energy I was already talking about. Within yourself and people in your household, especially if you're around people who are very masculine by nature, female or male, doesn't matter. Because um, they're either going to skyrocket in their growth or regress a lot, most likely. And like I said, we'll eventually see this on a societal level, but this is just the start. All right. So it happens within us. It happens in the masculine collective, which also affects the collective and then full on society later on. That's like the year span. OK. <laughs> um, and we we'll only take what you need and who you need where you're going because you don't need everything and everyone. All right. OK, guys, I love you. I really hope you guys enjoyed this just as much as I did. And I will see you guys later. I'm going to go and get start started on Aries and hopefully knock out a couple more signs. I I've noticed like since I've been back, plus some other shit I've been dealing with. I've been only been able to do like one sign a day. So I'm trying really hard to push past that. But I, I, I really only like to do readings when I'm in the right energy. And I know I know a lot of you understand that. For those who don't and those who feel entitled, I'm so sorry. You feel so entitled. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, I got to go and I will see you guys later. All right. Love you. Namaste. Bye.